Thank you very much for saying welcome back. Government is being urged to do more to force cost of borrowing down to levels below 20%. Renowned economist Professor Stephen Aday says a reasonable drop would, be, would bring relief to businesses to enhance sustainable growth. He spoke to Laugh Business on the sidelines of the business seminar by Christian Group MMV of the ICGC Trinity Temple in Kumasi. High interest rates remain a major challenge, especially to startups. Renowned economist Professor Stephen Ade is positive a reasonable drop below 20% would bring relief to businesses for sustainable growth. Professor Ade spoke to Love Business on the sidelines of a business seminar in Kumasi. Fortunately, the business climate is quite harsh. I mean, when you have to be paying, some young people told me just this week that they wanted some business, they went to the bank and they said they have to pay 40% per annum. I mean, that's crazy. Any business which has to start by paying anything above 20% is going to have difficulty. And apart from those who have quick turnover, you just go and buy it within one week, you sell it and turn over. But if you are manufacturing, penetrating markets, I think that there must be, there's no doubt at all that the macroeconomic factors like inflation and interest rate must come down markedly, not a matter of 3%, 2%. We are ranging so high that we are talking about within a short period half in it. The business seminar was put together by Christian Group, MMV of ICGC Trinity Temple in Kumase. The maiden edition provides a platform for business owners to support each other as well as the church. Jones Abuajie Champong is president. We sort of have this business conference to connect all the businessmen in the ministry. And then what we'll do is that we form a network. And what we want to do is that we'll come up with a website where we can be connected globally. And then we'll be communicating and linking ourselves to other businesses and see how Christians can, one, start their own business, how to make money, how to manage it, and how to multiply it. This is going to put Christian businessmen together. And the key thing is that then we can be supporting other areas. Even in the church, if your business is growing, then you can, one, help in employment for the youth, support the needy in the church, so that it will be easier for those who have little, you know, to multiply and then give to others so that they will also enjoy their service to God. Meanwhile, one of the speakers, Richmond Frimpon, who is managing director of Beige Pension Trust Fund, is urging business owners and entrepreneurs to explore long-term accumulated interest on investment to build their portfolio. The rate of interest on holding your own money is zero. The rate of interest on putting your money in a savings account is just about 5% averagely. But the rate of interest on any short-term investment would be a little over 18 to 20%. It means you beat inflation, you beat anything that would have ordinarily not given you uh, any return. Prince Apia. Reporting. All right, so we'll be doing more on the interest rates and uh, cost of doing business as the vice president is justifying uh, the move by the Bank of Ghana to reduce persistently the policy rate. But before we move on, the economist Professor Peter Corte has called for reforms within the Ghana Revenue Authority to make it more efficient in tax collections. Now, the authority in the last few weeks has launched a massive campaign aimed at improving tax compliance. This has been triggered by a shortfall in revenue projected for this year. Professor Peter Corte says although the campaign is laudable, the GRA must go beyond that. Uh, beyond that, I think GRA should also try and reform itself. Some of the taxes, uh, you don't wait for people to come and pay. You have to move out there and collect property rates. No, they don't even show up. And, and many other rates. There are some people who operate in the evenings or operate at night. Does the VRA go out there in the evenings to collect its taxes? Uh, you know, so you have to create the incentives for people or, or the environment for people to pay their taxes. I don't believe we should raise more taxes. I don't believe we should continue to borrow. At the moment, uh, in the budget, they said that the debt GDP is 68 point something. Uh, but that is if we don't factor in the ESLA money. Yeah. IMF says this should be part of government debt. 
If you put that back, it is 73.6%. Yes. If you do the calculation, yes. so it means we are even worse off in terms of debt, and therefore, continuing to borrow is not the way forward. Uh, we should raise more revenue, and I think we have the potential to do that. This is the Marketplace live on the Joy News channel, live on Multi TV. Now, moving on, Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Baumia has justified the decision by the Bank of Ghana to reduce the policy rate by some 100 basis points to 20%. According to the Vice President, the move is justified looking at the current development in the, current, uh, in the economy. In recent times, the level of inflation, Treasury bill rates, and government expenditure patterns have all dropped significantly. Dr. Baumia said this at the National Banking Conference ongoing in Accra. Mr. Sabuti was there for Joy Business and has joined me right here in the studio. Now, Ebenezer, tell me what came up uh, at the conference. Okay, uh, the Vice President was speaking uh, to justify, you know, some downward trends in the policy rate that we've seen so far. You know, three days ago, y just yesterday, mm -hmm. we heard some economists and policy analysts saying that the governor should have maintained the policy rate because whenever it comes down too much or drastically, it's going to have a negative impact on bonds and other investments on the capital market. So what the vice president seeks to do is just to clarify the issue that no, there are high non-performing loans and bringing down the policy rate is part of the issues, I mean the measures to drive down non-performing loans. But, but the issue of the fact that banks, uh, not all banks, are readily compliant with these new policy rates, did it come up? The fact that when policy rates are decreased, you find out banks still maintaining the interest rates and not ready to actually lower the interest rates. It, it, it's true, Yuma. And mm. one of those, those yeah, I think it's one of uh, the, the issues that came up mm. over there when I engaged the president of the uh, Bank Association was saying that, yes, it is true that the rate is coming down and people are saying banks are not able to drive down the rate. But it is not only the policy rate that determines the lending rate. So, yes. The, the policy rate is coming down, but there are other factors that determine it. I think we can listen to what the Vice President was saying. One of the issues that you know, has bedeviled the banking industry for, for many, many years has always been the issue of high interest rates. And the, 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 the big question that we grappled with at the central bank for the longest time as we pursued our inflation targeting framework is how do we bring down interest rates? It's a big question and one that you know, banks have struggled with, governments have struggled with. with. Um, we've always realized that high interest rates um, basically make it difficult for banking customers to actually repay their loans. <clears throat> so you end up <clears throat> in that environment either lending to government or lending at a very short end because you cannot take the risk of lending at a longer end. <laughs> and when your customers are unable to pay, of course, it affects our MPL ratios and everything, and, and it makes the banking system uh, very fragile. You know, so at the end of the day, you've been, we've been struggling with this issue, you know, in building a strong banking industry. At the same time, how do we uh, support that with a low interest rate environment? But we've always recognized that the macro economy has to be stable. Right, that at least the very first thing you want to put in place, and which is what the central bank is trying to do and has been trying to do, um, is to help bring some stability in the, on the macro side. The macro side being the fiscal side, which the Ministry of Finance has responsibility for, and then the monetary side, which um, the Bank of Ghana has responsibility for. And usually when there is good coordination between the two, then you have very, very good results for the, for the economy. 
Um, for us at the central bank, we are inherently very distrustful of the uh, people at the fiscal side. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, 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 we're, we're always uh, worried about what they may do uh, because they are, they are being driven more usually by political imperatives. All right, so the vice president hitting the nail right on his head here. But uh, Eben, what other issues came up at the conference? Okay, we all know that uh, one of the basic issues that has been in the banking sector now, especially during the last quarter of the year, has to do with recapitalization. The Bank of Ghana governor was there to speak about the issue about uh, recapitalization, urging the banks to either merge or look out for ways in order to recapitalize because we all know that by January 2018, any bank that is not able to recapitalize with the 400 million Ghana cities, it's not going to be allowed to operate in the country. Mm. So the governor has been speaking about that. Also, the vice president has been speaking about mortgage situations in our country. We all know that before we can be able to, I mean, get a good mortgage in this country, we go to hell. So he was speaking about, and he says that it is one, it's going to be one of the biggest, I mean, turnaround that the government is going to do from next year that has to do with uh, digitalization of land registration systems and other uh, measures that has to do with mortgage systems so that whenever you want to get a good mortgage it can be done on the silver platter so we can listen to the vice president speaking on mortgage issues uh, um, the paperless port clearance system that has been introduced again helps all of us um, and, and, and that. But one of the big things that we are going to be doing next year, uh, I'm sh we are shifting our focus to land and land registration. This is a real bay of the banking industry in the financial services industry. How do you develop a mortgage market if you cannot <laughs> really um, ascertain title to land? How, how does that market develop? You will not develop the mortgage market. In fact, when you look at the data, and I was a bit amazed when I looked at the data, you will see that in terms of mortgage to income ratio, Right, mortgage to income ratio. Ghana is up the highest in the world. Right, mortgage payments relative to income. <laughs> we top the world. Right, one of the lowest is the United States of America. But uh, you know, we we are at the top, and it doesn't make sense for the poorest countries to be in the top side of that bracket. Uh, mortgage to in but of course, it's telling you that a lot of the mortgages are being paid by people who are probably earning incomes uh, from outside and, 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 and it may be a very secluded few. But you can't develop a mortgage market with those types of ratios. Um, it will not. But we have to turn our focus to the land registry and the process of land title. I think this is the next phase of digitalization that is about to happen, and we are tackling that next year. All right, so that was the, national pre uh, the vice president speaking at the National Banking Conference. But Ebenezer, yeah. what were the bank's representatives saying, or what were their reactions to this? Uh, you know what? Uh, no bank in Ghana will tell us that tomorrow or next year, when the Bank of Ghana comes heavy on them, they will not be able to meet the requirements. Yeah. Or as to whether they will really be able to so <laughs> There's a, a saying in Chi, a granny form. So we <laughs> always uh, have to keep our eye okay. on, the, uh, I mean on them, mm. that whether they will be able to meet the requirements is another issue. They are saying, yes, we can be able to meet the requirements. But the government is also saying, no, it's about time you merge. Because no, but, but, but we have one clear year deadline for the deadline. So don't you think they can mobilize resources within this page? It's not time? easy to mobilize that amount of money we are mm, feeling. Mm. We have only two months to enter into the year. And when we enter into January, February, then we are just ending the year. So if you are not able to come out with clear guidelines as to how you are going to mobilize that fund, then you, you, you should be ready to smoke yourself The, the day out. reacts over this merging major or measures because uh, many times uh, many of them don't want to yeah yeah, yeah. To I, I, when, when I engage and Danny I think that that was one of the uh, issues that he, he spoke about that mm. some of them are considering measuring uh, I mean measuring with the microfinance or yeah. other international and local banks so 
let's see. I, I think it's 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 too early yet, but they, there will be there will certainly be Some a major. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Many thanks for your time, Ebenezer Sabuti. You're welcome. Okay. So Ebenezer Sabuti bringing us up to speed with developments at the ongoing national banking conference here in Accra. Now, still staying within the banking space, rural banks and microfinance companies may be given some grace period if they are not able to meet the new capital levels by the proposed deadline. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, who disclosed this to journalists, said the regulator is committed to supporting the growth of the sector rather than actions that would affect its development. There's more in the following business desk report. Rural banks are expected to meet the new capital level of 1 million cities by the end of December. However, most of them have maintained that it will be difficult to meet this new requirement by that time. Joy Business is learning that about 40 out of the 141 rural and community banks have so far met the requirement. The Association of Rural Banks are calling for an extension to help them meet this new level. Well, it looks like their prayers have been heard by the governor of the Bank of Ghana. For microfinance companies, the situation could be a little different. They are expected to increase their current capital level from 1 million cities to 2 million cities by June 2018. We, we would work with the rural banks to strengthen the levels of capitalization. It's important. It's important to the extent that we are allowing them to take on depositors' funds. We have to ensure that these banks are strong enough to, to do that. And, and this is the assurance that I give them that we will be flexible and work with them to build up the, the levels of capitalization. Now, I know that microfinance institutions will also be facing a similar challenge. Uh, sometime, I think the deadline is in June, June 2018, and we would urge them to try to raise their levels of capitals. Joy Business is learning that even though the regulator would be flexible with the microfinance companies, there's the possibility some of them could have their licenses reduced to a lower level if they are not able to meet the new requirement. Enough of the financials now. Let's now cross over to aviation. And about five new airlines are undergoing various stages of processing to commence operations in Ghana. Following the suspension of activity by one domestic airline, Stabo, there have been concerns about the ability of the only domestic airline, Africa World Airline, to deal effectively with the increasing volumes of passengers. Speaking to Joy Business, Director General of the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, Simon Aluti, said the new entrants will contribute immensely to expanding the domestic aviation industry by 2019. The government, through its first budget, removed the 17.5% VAT on domestic airfares to help make domestic travel affordable. This policy intervention, according to the aviation ministry, has led to a steady increase in domestic travel of about 24% between the year 2016 and 2017. However, the crash involving the Starbo airline at the Kutuka International Airport over the past weekend has raised concerns about the ability of the only domestic airline, Africa World Air, to handle the passenger overflow. However, according to the regulator, the discomfort will be short-lived as five new entrants are lacing their boots to participate in the domestic air business. Simon Alote is the Director General of the GCAA. If there are some more Jans Airline has uh, received their air career license, they will soon start the certification process. It's a five-phase uh, process. Then we have Montran Air, they also have an ACL. And there's Gold Star going through certification. We have Smile Air going through certification. And um, there is DAC Airlines, which has just received their air operator certification. So it's, things will get better, definitely. There'll be more competition in the coming months or by the end of. 2019, we should see a few more operators doing both local and local, regional, and intercontinental flights. The Ghana Civil Aviation Authority adds the quest to establish a national carrier is underway. Mr. Aluti explains operations of the new national carrier will be different from the previous national airline, Ghana Airways. You know, the concept is different. The, a new airline will be established. The 
Ghanaian investors, including existing airlines, will be invited. Anybody who wants to participate could put in a bid. And already there is a, a lot of interest from both local operators and international operators. So the concept is to get the carrier established with government having some shares, but no controlling interest. The strategic investor or investors will actually manage operate the airline, government will be represented, of course, at the board level to pursue its interest. So it's not necessarily empowering a Ghanaian, an already existent Ghanaian registered carrier to, you know, operate on some of the routes for which we have traffic rights, but it's establishing a totally new airline with government having some participation in it. Some analysts say there's no need to establish an entirely new carrier and that a strong home-based carrier will be good enough to fly the national colors. But to the aim of becoming an aviation hub, however, there might be a compelling case for the country to have a carrier of its own. Sheila Tamaklu for Joy Business. Now, MTN Ghana has denied any attempt to increase mobile charges for customers anytime soon. It follows recent reports that the mobile operator was planning to increase its rate charges to pass on to consumers the high cost of operations incurred as a result of the challenging economic environment. But according to the telecom network, it is rather focusing on improving its network quality to the benefit of customers. MTN in this light organized a dinner event dubbed Yellow Soiree to appreciate local customers who have been on the network since its inception. Speaking with Joy Business Customer Relations Executive at MTN Ghana, Jemima Kote Walsh said the initiative is an affirmation of the company's commitment to customer service. It's purely to thank them, and that's what it is. There's nothing behind this. It's about the customers, about celebrating them and thanking them, and that's all there is to it, really. What's in it for MTN customers moving into 2018? Into 2018, we can assure our customers that customer experience will continue to be a key focus area for the business and we'll do whatever it takes to, ex to improve the experience at all levels, be the network quality, the service delivery, the products and services that we churn. We'll make sure that they remain relevant and meet the customer's requirements and needs. So how about loyal customers? What's your experience about the company's services? Here's Archibald from Paul. I have been on MTN um, for the past 10 years now. And the experience has been, um, it has been really rich. Um, you know, let me share an experience with you. There was this time I had an issue with MTN. There was this network interruption. And it took the whole CEO who just picks his phone to call me to apologize. And I, I really felt welcomed onto the network. I've tried other networks before. I wouldn't mention names. Sometimes you call their customer care, and the way they even speak with you, it, it makes you feel as if they are doing you a favor, forgetting that a SIM card is just one CD away. So that has been my, my experience with MTN, and I think it's, it's been good so far. I don't intend changing anytime soon. Okay, apart from this customer service that you, you said, uh, what of network quality uh, as compared to other networks? I, I, but I don't think they are, they, are, they are really something that would make me change my mind on the network. I think their are, are positives are more than the negatives. So for me, once you value me as a customer, I would be on you forever and ever. MTN Ghana sees the opportunity to reward some customers with mobile phones and assorted electronic communication gadgets by way of a raffle. And that will be it for this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace. Many thanks for your company. My name is Imano Abwaji Yapi. Let's make a date again, same time tomorrow. Have a good afternoon.